Hello, everyone. Welcome to Todd Talks. We are checking out Tasha's Cauldron of Everything today and how to use it on D&D Beyond. Joining me is Lauren Urban, our community manager over at D&D Beyond. Lauren, you're going you're gonna to walk us through some stuff. We got a lot of people who have questions and thoughts and uh, how, how, how to uh, start using characters on D&D Beyond using Tasha's. Yes. So Tasha's came out today this morning last night kind of depends on your time zone so yay Yay! Tasha's is a giant book filled with all kinds of awesome stuff including a lot of of really good crunch and it's been a while since dnd beyond has released a book that has all this crunch in it all these subclasses all these uh different ways of doing stuff we've got um it's just a lot of updates. And so uh, some of the stuff that we're going to talk about is still being worked on. And that's specifically like the character builder. So um, I wanted to start off by saying that if you are watching this right now on Twitch, or if you're watching this later on YouTube, there's going to be a link to go to this thread that I'm looking at right here on our forums, which we put up for all of our content that we release. Every book we do a issues and support thread to try to keep people updated on things that you know have been found to not be working yet or that we're still working on so that everybody can be on the same page. So if they see an issue, you can come to this thread and see, oh, is this a known issue? Is this not a known issue? Uh, We're going to talk in general about the character builder and some of the new character options, but there's a lot of stuff that isn't implemented yet. And so I highly recommend you come to this thread. We keep it updated. It's got a lot of really useful information, including some tutorial stuff to help you out with um, using some of the new features that have come out. The optional class features and the customizable origins are essentially new ways of creating your character. So come here and get the updated information because uh, what I'm going to say today is going to be general information. But if you're looking for specifics, especially in the next couple of days, you're going to want to come here. Yeah. And and keep in mind and, and you know, and, and of course be patient because Tasha's cauldron of everything is very unusual and unique in the fact it is such a massive structural change to D and D as a game itself. That obviously means that in terms of like the website itself that requires a certain structural change as well, when you're, when you're changing things and I love everything that's in this book, but I'm I'm very glad I'm not the one who has to change things <laughs> because because there are so many wonderful things in the book that really kind of adjust fifth edition to be I, I feel more user friendly that gives players way way more options and that can only take a, a bit of time uh, to update a site and, and to get up and running. I'm actually genuinely amazed at our devs and the hard work that they've done and how far they've gone on all of this. Uh, again, very thankful I'm not a deaf. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad this is not my responsibility. I'm glad I'm a talking head and I just get to sit there and make characters all day. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's dive in. <laughs> yeah. And I do know, I mean, to, to echo that, we're as excited to use this stuff as you are. So we're as antsy to get a hold of all of the new stuff as everybody is. Uh, so a couple of things that you need to know before you start making characters with Tasha's uh, new abilities, essentially. Um, if you want to access any of the content in Tasha's, you do need to own it or you do need to have access to it through content sharing. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show off, you do need to have access to Tasha's. Um, but if you are looking to homebrew, say you want to homebrew some optional class features or homebrew some of the optional origins that we're going to be talking about, you, you can do that with homebrew, uh, without having access to Tasha's. So just be aware of that. If you want to play around with some of these options, but you haven't had the chance to have someone gift you the book yet or share it with you yet, uh, you can start to play around with at least the options, but to have access to the actual content, you either need to have purchased the book, which is available now, or have it uh, content shared with you. And then uh, the two biggest things that people are really excited about are these optional class features and the optional origins. Yeah. Let's do it. 
So we're gonna uh, enough gonna of the sh- politeness. I want to make a character. All right. So uh, the first thing when you build a character, you're gonna come to this home screen. You're gonna have a lot of options on here that most people are familiar with, and you'll see a new section here: optional features. This is specifically tied to um, allowing optional class features and customizing your origin. The same way you can turn on and off critical role content, homebrew content, all of that. So if you want access to all of this, make sure they're on, make sure they're red. Can um, we change the name from character preferences to Toggle Town? Sure. I'm just asking. I usually <laughs> sit here and I, I go through the randomize of the name generator, but... Toggle Town. Toggle Town it is. Welcome to Toggle Town. <laughs> Welcome to Toggle Town where we're going to allow we're going to allow everything. Because remember these are optional features and maybe your dungeon master is just mean and doesn't want you to use anything from Tasha's. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you are starting a new campaign and uh, you're the person coming in with all of this experience. You've been playing for years. You've got all of the books, but you're playing in a campaign with a bunch yeah. of people who all they have access to is player's handbook. And this is their first game. And yeah. your DM has said, hey, for the moment, let's just keep everything simple. Let's just keep it to the player's handbook and to the basic uh stuff that's in like one or two books let's not offer all the options right away and so that's a good way to make sure that you're not whoopsie you know creating a character with with these options if you don't want to use them so uh todd go ahead and pick a race uh oh, oh no there's a lot of pressure uh too late uh, uh, Dra- dragonborn yes that's always that's always a good race so um this is all going to look the same you're going to pick your um you know which race that you want to go with mm-hmm. and it's going to show you all of the normal stuff and then you're going to notice over here origin manager Ooh. which we've turned on and this is going to give you all the different options in tasha's which lets you alter things like your ability scores and your features and traits um depending on the options that are available in tasha's and things that you want to do so this is so if your dragonborn didn't grow up in a in an archetypical way but grew up with a bunch of dwarves and so they speak dwarvish instead of draconic Mm -hmm. or uh you want to play a dragonborn that is um that has spent their life studying and is really interested in becoming a wizard and so So reverse smog (laughs) exactly grew up with Uh, dwarves very on very friendly terms you won't play that dragon poor. <laughs> Pretty much. And so what it's going to offer you here are the different things that you can change, which for Dragonborn are the ability. And for most of the, for all the races, it should give you the option to change your ability scores. So I want to be able to switch those around and your languages, uh, depending on what other abilities you, this origin, this race has, it will give you some other options. Um, but for Dragonborn, and this is probably good that we'll keep this simple for now. We just got the two. So yeah. all we've literally done is told the character builder, hey, I want to change things about my origin. But you'll notice nothing has changed yet. We do have to come back to racial traits. And now what you'll notice is there's some more stuff to choose from. I can not only pick my ancestry for uh, yeah. my draconic ancestry, but now we can go in and it's going to tell us, hey, you want to pick some new ability scores. Now, you can't apply both these increases to the same ability score. That's and you're no. not supposed to go over 20. Yeah. Because... A lot of the things in the d d Beyond Character Builder are built to be able to give you as many options as possible. The reason we have that in here is because for the moment, you, you can actually do that. You can yeah. whoopsie. By can, we mean you can break the game. <laughs> but, uh, we, we, but, but we're asking for your better nature. Don't dump everything into charisma. <laughs> and become or, the perfect warlock dragonborn <laughs> or this is one of those and where are is your dm following this rule or not have they totally specifically true. said no nope. go ahead and just dump everything into charisma if you really wanted to um it's so it's kind of up to you but it, it's going to remind you right here of what the actual rule is um i love this i love narratively what this is going to do for the game i mean you could because yeah, you're right. Like, maybe you want to play a Dragonborn and you want to be the smartest Dragonborn. Like, you you know, the one who's really good at wizardry. And now I can kind of have that dream and not have these kind of, 
you know, these arguments of, well, that's not the optimized race or origin for playing that, you know, class, but I, I want to do it anyways. Like I, I, I played, uh, I mean, I played lots of creatures that were not optimized for their classes and, and this forgives all of that. And I really love the idea of like, this can, this is a lot better character growth to me. And the fact that we have on D&D Beyond, I'm extremely excited to, to start messing around with this. Absolutely. It's just another option. I mean, as someone who's playing a Dragonborn cleric right now, which is not the optimal class. And yeah, for being combo, a cleric, yeah. But, you know, and so now if you have a character option in mind, a character uh, concept in mind, you are you have the ability to still have the stats to be effective when you are playing as well as um be able to play the character that you want and once again this is all optional if your dm wants to go by the original rules that are in a player's handbook you just say no to this and you're absolutely fine but for now um let's let's make this a nice intelligent dragonborn we're gonna make a wizard dragonborn because why not um same thing for languages and see this is interesting because imagine imagine being a dragonborn but you don't know how to speak dragonborn (laughs) you know like you know then there's a story right there Exactly. And this is going to be another one of those places in where we've, we're going to tell you what the official rule in the book is, but D&D Beyond is also going to let you essentially break that rule mm-hmm. because it tells you the list of languages that you're supposed to pick from. But then it also says your DM may add or remove languages from that list, depending on what languages are appropriate for your campaign. So you'll notice this list that you can choose from includes all the languages because we want you to have all the options in case your DM says, everybody in this campaign, uh, everybody is going to learn Leonin. There you go. You can As you do. You can all speak with, with the, the fun line people in uh, Mythic Odyssey of Theros. Yeah. So it'll let you pick from everything, but it'll it'll give you the heads up. Hey, this is, you know, if you're you're going by the rules, this is what you're supposed to pick. Um, I since we're going with an actual uh we're going with an actual wizard, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the draconic in there because I feel like that makes sense. Um, but there you go. That gets us all of the different uh, origins for our dragonborn. As I said, other races have different options. Uh, they're they're dependent on what your um, what you've picked, and all you gotta do is go into Origin Manager. They'll be right there. You turn them on. You can decide which ones you want to use and go from there. So yeah. now let's go to class. This is where things are gonna get weird in a good way. Well they're going to get fun. So we'll go That's ahead. And what I, mean. this I think loses. weird is fun. So <laughs> yeah. And we'll now make... we're getting into the, the optional features manager. Yeah. So the, um, the wizard stuff, the class feature variants are the same kind of thing as what we just saw with the origin and where you're going to come here, you're going to pick what class you want to be. And then look optional features manager, and it's going to be, the same kind of thing in where what you're going to be picking from are the options that you can either replace or add and it's going to be very class specific Mm -hmm. um this can get complicated depending on how high of a level you are and how much you want to change i would probably suggest until you're familiar with all the options have the copy of Tasha's here so that you can go right to uh, what are the optional class features, you know, have another tab with what the wizard, the normal stuff is so that you you can see everything all at once and kind of compare. Um, But essentially you're going to do exactly the same thing. Um, So additional wizard, wizard spells, this is just allowing you to have a wider option of spells to pick from. Right. Um, forgive some of the um, the way some of this is looking right now. We're still uh, forgive our dust. Some of this is still being <laughs> updated. Yeah. Um, but the furniture has been built, but there is some sawdust on the ground. <laughs> the the house is is beautiful, but we still have to put some rugs down. So please, yeah. please. But yes, this is this will list off all of the spells um, that you can add, and then uh, since we just went up to level three cantrip formulas, so this is a different feature for your third level level wizard that you can uh i believe this is a replacement so this is the thing some of these are replacements for stuff and some of them will be in addition 
And that's one of the things you'll, you'll want to be double checking is does this replace uh, a feature you have or does this add to a feature you have? Um, and then same thing, once you've decided, hey, I want these optional features, you come back here to class feature and those options should be in there when you're picking your spells. Hey, look, you've got the, uh, the different spells that are still looking nice. Um, so yeah, that's, and here's the cantrip formulas. That's already, so this is a replacement. Normally when you are a wizard at third level, so let's, let's get rid of this and I'll actually show you. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's just a it's an addition. I'm sorry. So yeah. wizards don't normally get something at third level there, and now we're 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 gonna give it to those to those wizards. So our our draconic wizard can actually do that, and there it is. So it this will all work the same way. If I go ahead and hey, let's let's make our draconic wizard a level twenty. You'll now see this. Ah, uh, there's going uh, to be some there's going to be a whole bunch, but I might have to refresh. I might have I might have done too much, but yeah, basically all of these different options are going to be coming up. Oh, you know what it is? Nope, I am wrong. So this is what I get for having a new book. Um, wizards only have stuff at first and third. After right. that, it's you pick your your subclass. Yeah. So that's why nothing else showed up. Yeah, that's there, my there, 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 yeah, there are not as many options for wizard. W wizards have a lot of options already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, clerics have a ton of options too. And then there's also bonus options. And then there are some, yeah. some classes that don't. So, but yeah, same kind of thing. You're just going to come to the optional features manager. You'll pick the stuff you want. And there it is. Um, Rogues are another good example of there are not as many optional class features. I believe there's one <laughs> for rogues. <laughs> so it'll be pretty simple yeah. uh, when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to take a quick look here just to make sure, because th that was kind of the major thing. A lot of people, um, because these are new things in the, uh, in the content, in the character builder, a lot of people are missing, you know, they bought Tasha's and they're excited to jump in and make a new character. And if you're, if you don't have this turned on, if you don't know where to look, um, so now, now you do, and there you go. And you can go from there. Everything else should be the same pretty much. Um, you'll pick everything as you normally would, and it should now all show up in the character sheet as normal. We've recently updated the, um, there were a lot of new subclasses that included a new feature where it's, you can use something a certain number of times depending on your proficiency bonus. Right. So that's now been updated so that it's showing the correct numbers there and doing the correct math there. Um, all of the feats and spells and magic items are available um, and can be added and used. Some of the feats are still being worked on. So be careful about that. You want to check out the um, that link to the forums that I talked about that had all right. the updates. Some of the feats are, are still being retooled to, um, to work the way they should in the character sheet. Um, a lot of the spells and some of the class features will let you summon a creature that has skills or bonuses that are based on your stats, which is kind of a new thing. Um, the Wildfire Druid is one of the, the big ones that way. Yeah. You're going to have access to that stat block in your character sheet, but it is not going to auto update with your information yet. So yeah. you for now, still... you'll still have to do the math on your own. Um, I believe yeah. that's true as well for the Artificer um, uh, <clears throat> still defender uh, as well. So this is this, this isn't necessarily something new, but obviously they are working to get that to be scalable uh, in D and D Beyond. So you don't have to do that math yourself. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is available now on D and D Beyond. Purchase before January fifth to unlock the Cauldron die set, as well as character sheet backdrops, themes, and frames.